Hey guys, what's going on? I'm uh, going to do a quick tutorial here for the autopilot of the F-18 Hornet. Uh, we'll talk about the four modes and uh, show you how to engage everything. All right, now, first thing I'm going to do right off the bat is engage auto throttle. I'm going to do that by pressing T. And you can see ATC came up on my HUD there on the right hand side. That's auto throttle control, and that is now active. So the plane will hold its speed at, as you can see on the left hand side, at 314. Okay? So you don't have to do that for the autopilot, but I, I just like to do that. So that's how you engage auto throttle. You turn it off by pressing T again, and it goes off. Okay? So, first thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do, guys, is come over here to Autopilot. All right, we're going to press that button, and you can see that we have four options presented to us. We have ATTH, which is Attitude Hold. We have H-Cell, which is Heading Select. We have B-Alt, which is Barometric Altitude Hold. And we have R-Alt, which is Radar Altitude Hold. Okay? So... Uh, we'll talk first about the H cell, uh, heading select. And to do that, the first thing we're going to do is come down here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this moving map just to make things a little more clear. I do that by pressing the mode button on the left-hand side twice. One, two. And you see the moving map goes away. Uh, you're going to be looking for those two blocks that are at the top of north right there. That is what the plane's current heading is at. Okay, if we look at what it's uh, automatically set at, okay, now if you look at the, the plane's heading right now, we are just a little bit off of 000, zero, zero or true north. So as soon as I hit this heading select button, the plane should do a little bit of a roll to the right, okay? Now I'm just going to go ahead and select the autopilot mode that I want, which is heading select. I'm going to press that circular button to the left of it. See, the plane does a little tilt to the right, and it's just going to level us out at true north at 0, 0, 0. Okay? So that is how you do the heading select. Now, when you come down here, you want to select your actual heading. Which way do you want to actually go? You press this HDG button in the top left-hand corner here. And remember those two blocks we talked about? You can move that to the left or to the right. So let's go to 330. You see those two blocks? They went over 33. Three. You can see the plane is now turning, bearing 330. And once she reaches that, she'll level up. And let's say I want to go to the right now. I can hold this HDG button to the right and put it back to, let's just say, right above north. Okay. It's close enough and the plane will try to turn back to zero, zero, zero. Now, I personally, I don't like to do it manually with the HDG. Uh, I find it tedious and I gotta get my head down there. I don't like that. So the other way to do it is to just type it right here. You just go zero, whatever heading you want, zero, nine, zero, and you just hit the enter button. And that's it. The plane will just jump to zero, nine, zero. You can see those two boxes, they went above the east. Okay, they just jump straight to the heading I typed in. And you can see the plane will just turn until it hits 0, 090. 0. So that is heading select and how that works. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and disengage the heading select autopilot now by pressing the autopilot button again. And that button that we pressed to the left hand side of H cell to turn it on, I'm just going to press it again. And it's going to take those two dots away, and that means that heading select autopilot is deselected. Okay? I'm going to level the plane back out. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go to barometric and radar altitude mode. Uh, those two, I got a little graphic that will explain those to you guys, and then we'll come back here and I will show you how to engage and disengage them again. All right, guys, having a look at this uh, graphic here to explain radar altitude. We have our hornet and a gradual incline, okay, and 
this red beam is going to represent the radar bouncing, sending a signal that bounces off the ground. And the green one is going to represent that same beam hitting the ground and bouncing back to the plane, which is how the plane identifies radar altitude, okay, by how fast these bounce back to the plane. So this is obviously a very simplified explanation, right? So as the plane travels up this hill, instead of flying like this and hitting you into the side of the cliff, it's... Uh, slowly and gradually increases the altitude because the radar is constantly aware that the altitude on the ground, the elevation on the ground is changing. So it's changing your altitude to match that elevation as it gradually increases. Now, it's important to note that these beams are directly below your plane. Okay, They do not bounce off in front of the plane. Okay. We'll talk about why that's important in a second, all right? And it's also important to note that you can only use this mode, the radar altitude mode, at 5,000 feet and below, okay? And I'm assuming that's because the radar beam isn't accurate above 5,000, okay? And in this graphic, we can see why the uh, it's important to know that the radar altitude bounces off directly under your plane and not in front of your plane. Because let's say you're flying over a flat ocean or a flat ground or whatever, and the plane thinks that the elevation is constant, constant, constant as you fly, right? And it's not changing your elevation. And then there's a massive increase in elevation due to this cliff here, right? The radar altitude isn't looking in front of you. It's looking below you. So it's not going to see this cliff, and it's going to fly you right into it, okay? So this is why it's important. These are the limitations of the radar altitude, okay? It cannot see in front of you. Now, for the barometric altitude, uh, the way that that works, obviously another simplified explanation, is when you look at atmospheric pressure, okay? It decreases as elevation increases. And that number by which it decreases is a constant, okay? So that number decreases the same over the United States airspace as it does over Chinese airspace, as it does over Russian, Indian, uh, German. It's all the same, okay? So because it's a constant number, the airplane can actually measure the pressure at which it's flying and gauge the altitude at which it's at okay so what you really have in your plane when you uh, turn on the barometric altitude is an instrument that is measuring air pressure based on that measurement it's going to tell you what your elevation or altitude is and based on that pressure it's going to keep you level at that atmospheric pressure okay so this is the graph you don't need to know it, okay? I'm just showing you so you know that this is a real thing, all right? And this is basically how barometric altitude works. So <clears throat> just as an example, you know, let's just look at it. We have, uh, we have 60 kPa here. So let's pretend you're flying and your plane is measuring 60 kPa. It's going to look over here and it's going to go, okay, he's flying about 4,000 feet or sorry meters this is measured in meters so it'll look over and it'll be like okay he's flying around 4,000 meters okay and it'll show that to you on your HUD and it'll also obviously use these numbers to keep you level that's how barometric altitude works so in relation in in contrast to the radar altitude you can see that barometric altitude does not care at all what's in front of you what's under you it'll literally fly you into the side of a cliff Okay, so it's obviously advisable to use it above 5,000 feet. But again, if you use it at 5,000 feet and you're flying towards a mountain that's 5,000 feet, it's going to fly you right into it. Okay, so these are the limitations of the barometric altitude hold. It cannot see under you, in front of you, anywhere. It's just keeping you at a constant uh, altitude. That's it. All right. Okay, so you watch the graphics, you should now have a basic understanding of how barometric and radar altitude work. Uh, I'm now going to show you how to engage the two.
So we're going to come down here. We'll do barometric altitude first. Okay, so again, just like the other one, you would have pressed the autopilot button. You would have pre been presented with these four options. You press that circular button to the left-hand side of B Alt, and you get those two dots that appear. That means it's activated. Okay. Now, you look at the HUD there, 5,890, and with a deviation of minus 10, minus 0, and 0. So we now have barometric altitude hold activated, and the plane will just maintain this altitude. Okay. Now, we discussed the the limitations of barometric altitude hold. If you look way off into the distance there, I'm kind of headed towards a mountain. Let's pretend that I'm headed right into the side of that mountain. Uh, we discussed the limitations. If I just leave the plane like this, it will fly me right into the side of that mountain eventually. Okay, So it's important to know the limitations of the autopilot, and that's one of them for the barometric altitude hold. All right, so that, that's how you would select barometric altitude. Now, let's come down here, and I'm going to disengage barometric altitude hold by pressing the button again on the left-hand side, and you see those two dots go away. It's no longer activated. And I'm going to press now the R-Alt for radar altitude hold. And you can see that it's not selected. And the reason for that is because I'm above 5,000 feet. Okay, so you can see 5,890. I'm above what's required for the radar altitude hold. So therefore, I'm pressing the button, and nothing's happened. Okay, so I'm going to drop the altitude down to below 5,000, and we'll come back and I'll show you how it works. So here we are again at 3,600 feet, and I'm going to press that left-hand button for radar altitude. And you see those two dots appear, and it turns on, okay? Because we're below 5,000. And as we talked about in the graphics there, I, I don't know the reason why 5,000 is the magic number. I'm assuming it's just not accurate above that, okay? So that is how you would engage radar altitude hold, below 5,000. And you can see as we approach these hills and elevations, the altitude hold will change a little bit. It'll take us up just a little bit, a little bit down. Now, if I was flying into a cliff, as we talked about, the radar altitude would not be able to see it, and it would fly me right into the side of a cliff. Now, these hills under us have very gradual inclines, so it's fine. We can use radar altitude hold. Even that mountain off in the distance would probably be okay. So you can see it's increasing our altitude there, 3,700, and we are going over this hill here. Okay, so that is how radar altitude hold works. Now, let's discuss a little bit barometric altitude hold with the attitude hold. And that's how you would put the plane into an orbit if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage radar altitude. And I'm going to pull the plane up to around 7,000 feet. You don't have to be 7,000. I'm just going to go up there and I'm going to show you how to engage an orbit. All right, um, and I'll see you guys at 7,000 feet. All right, guys, here we are, 7,600 feet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and engage the plane into an orbit. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over here and we're going to reselect our barometric altitude hold, which we know how to do now. We're going to press that button. The plane's going to engage a barometric altitude hold at 7,300 feet. Okay, so now we're flying straight at 7,300. We want to engage in an orbit. What we're going to do is just tilt the plane to whatever angle we want to orbit at. If you want a tight angle, you do a tighter turn, obviously. Okay. And now you just hit the attitude hold button. And you can see that it engages alongside barometric altitude. So you actually have two autopilots activated at this point. Attitude hold and barometric altitude hold. And you can see the plane is just going to maintain this degree of turn, whatever bank I set it at, just by manually tilting the plane the direction that I want. I engage the attitude hold and the barometric altitude hold. The plane will keep us level and banked at this degree that I've chosen. And that's it.
this is how you would establish an orbit over a target, over the carrier group, whatever it is you're trying to orbit. All right. So that, guys, is the tutorial for the Hornets Autopilot. I hope that you found this uh, useful. And if not, feel free to leave some comments about how I could have improved it. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. See you next time.